All right, so going off our text blocking sketch, we are modifying resources we're finding from Defont, and we're just using screen grabs of them, and then using our compositing skills of transforming and warping and modifying to place them within our text block sketch. So then we can evaluate kind of which one works best, and then we can bring it into Illustrator to make final changes to it. So these are called modifications to existing typefaces. And even if your type design is completely original, and you want to do it all by hand, it can be really helpful to see how different type designers have solved some of the issues that you're likely to deal with. Whether it has to do with spacing or making it clear. Notice that as I warp the type, there are certain things I want to keep in line and then certain angles I want to keep. So sometimes I'll, I'll use warp and then other times I'll use command T and then distort. And distort will just tug it at the corners rather than turning them into curves. You can keep hitting return, keep hitting command T, right clicking within and, var and varying some of the options. You can hold down shift to distort it. I'm just trying to fit the quality or the, the ideas in my um, blocking sketch with this typeface. And there we go. I'm getting to it. So distort's a really good tool for that. Sometimes when you distort a certain letter form, it can start to look like another letter form. You know, C's turning, looking like G's when you distort them a certain way. So these are the kind of things you look for. So right now I have this option for the type. I have this option for the type. Let me take that down a little bit. It's a little overpowering. And I think of these two, I'm clearly more fond of this to begin with. But let's get one more option. And that's why I did these screen grabs. The last one was not poster man. So this does have lower case. And I could always just go to default and type in not poster man and go right to it. But I'm just going to scroll back. And there are so many, so many options. Uh, you just don't want to waste too much time looking around. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say day of the. And now this is going to have lowercase as well as uppercase. And I can try it both ways. So let me see, see if I can get away with it being large. If it's large, it will be a little bit crisper. There we go. When I do my screen grab. And then let's do dead. And let's try. Maybe they have an exclamation mark. Hey, hey. All right, let's try all caps. Notice the kerning on this is very wide, which makes it easy to modify, even though it's a little too wide for, for readability right now. It's a little too readable. It doesn't have the personality I'm looking for. Okay, so now with all these screen grabs, I can move them in. I can modify them. Distort's a good place to start, especially because I don't want those horizontals and verticals. I can take the opacity down on it so I can see my blocking sketch behind it. Command T, right click.
Amazing how distorting it in the way that my blocking sketch does already fixes a lot of those kerning issues. Right click, warping it. Depends how you drag on it. If I drag from the middle, it will increase its proportions in the middle, but if I drag from the bottom, it will give me these nice little tails on the type at the bottom edge. And I'm actually liking this more than I thought I would as potentially something to modify. Yeah. There's little things, but pretty good. All right, let's bring in the top. So since I've been doing all caps, a nice little trick for people who just dabble in type and layout is that if you use all caps, it automatically spaces the letters for you. Whereas playing with upper and lower case, that can really affect readability. So for instance, when you read a comic book, letterers almost always typeset entirely in capitals. And so question if you really need lowercase for your poster type because often it's not going to be as readable and then maybe you don't want it to be as readable in certain aspects right you really want to downplay it that might be a reason now with all these modifications it's i sometimes wonder would the type designer even recognize their work But we're going to push these modifications further and customize them as our own vector shapes. And then we're going to play with the spacing. So notice how the kerning between the letters is pretty good, but the actual spacing between the words is, is too thick. And so I'm going to work a little bit on this specifically. And this is how I'm going to rasterize this screen grab so that I can start cutting it up. And I'm going to duplicate just that word. I'm going to duplicate just this word. Again, these are like their own text blocks. And I'm going to duplicate, excuse me, just this word, all the different components so that I can modify them individually. Let me take down their opacities. And this is all that kind of planning and understanding how you tackle it before we get into the, the harder work of making it a vector. So let's see. Now I can play with individual distort and warps. If I want that D to be bigger, I can warp away from it, pinching the others. But I don't want it to get too soft looking, which can often happen. That closes the gap between the day and the of. I kind of like the of where it is, so I'm going to go with the the. Play with it. And one problem with the the is the right side of the H is far too thin for my taste. So I can warp and stretch that a little bit. So these compositing skills really come in handy. All right, now if I put all those into a folder, hmm, where did the dead come from? There it is. 
So if I put all of these in a folder, and I turn off my sketch, I can set that folder to multiply mode. And I can just see how that modified type might work and if it's readable. And then if I turn my color on, I can see how it looks behind my spot illustration. And I might make some changes at that point. So this one is called Not Posterman. <laughs> and I like to do this in my Photoshop files because if there's a poster I, I like that I did, I can remind myself what the typeface was that I used just by labeling the layer. If I use it as a, an actual typeface within Photoshop, like I use the type tool, and this is true in Illustrator as well. So right now this is called LinoWrite. But let's say I use Ethelx. And I set it this way. And I have some tools, just so you know, if you are playing with type tools within Photoshop, you have your modifications up in the toolbar here, especially this one. You can adjust the fonts of it, you know, bold, uh, italics. What's nice is Photoshop allows you to do that to any typeface, even if it doesn't have those fonts available for it. This, these are the fonts that come with the typeface, a bold italic. You can play with the kerning. You can play with what's called the letting. That's the, the, line, the space between lines of type, which can be really helpful in poster design. And of course, my favorite trick is you can play with the kerning just by holding down Option and using your arrow keys left and right. You can also play with the, the size, right? The point sizes. And just like what we did with our screen grabs, even though it's a type tool and it's still set in kind of this word processing format, you can still transform it. You'll just have some limited transform capabilities. You'll see that distort and warp aren't options. But you can rotate, you can stretch, you can hold down shift and compress. If you want it to be on an arc like this, you have to use the arc tools that are part of the type tool, which is right here. And sometimes certain things are supported more than other things. So on and so forth, right? But here's the issue. If you save this as a Photoshop file, and then you open it on a computer that doesn't have that typeface, then Photoshop won't be able to render that as a vector. It will have to rasterize it, right? So that's why we're creating our own vectors from whatever pixels we come up with, even if there are our own pixels, to make the type. So I think I'm going to play with the, the placement of the the a little bit. And now I'm thinking of how it relates. So I can actually turn on auto select here. And now I'm really going to customize it in terms of placement. It's up to you how much you want to spend time on this for your type, depending on how tricky your type is. But you want it to be readable, and you want it to support your image. Yeah, actually, it works pretty well. I might shrink it a little. You hold down Shift to just to uh, like squeeze it. And if I wanted to play with the individual kerning, like of the T, I then have to isolate that T just like I isolated the words before. And then transform that separately. Thicken it out a little bit, 